Hey, 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 welcome back. Another exciting episode. Today, some old friends zooming in from the beautiful province of Saskatchewan. We've got Laddie and Shelly James, very, very experienced real estate investors, very, very experienced entrepreneurs, and just a rock and roll couple all over. So you guys, welcome to the show. Great to see you again. So good to see you, Dave. Wonderful to see you again. I don't so, know about rock and roll, but <laughs> well, I, I tell you what, I I consider you guys a rock and roll couple, that's for sure. So, tell us a little bit about how you got into real estate investing, how long you've been doing it, and kind of like where you're at right now. What what does the portfolio look like? So, when did it first start? When we first met, <laughs> um, actually, probably before, but. Really, our first date was a cup of coffee and driving around looking at real estate. That is and... the weirdest first date I've ever heard of. <laughs> well, we're we're kind of weird like that. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's good. Weird. That's a good one. I don't wonder you've been together so long. So, so yeah. that was, if you don't mind sharing, what year would that have been? 1986. 86? Yeah. Nice, 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 nice. All right. So you started started off the relationship looking at properties. When did you purchase your first revenue property together? It was our, our first, first house, house, actually, uh -huh. that we did on a, an agreement for sale. We convinced it because we had no money. Yeah. Uh, we got a couple thousand dollars that was gifted to us, um, luckily at the point in time, by my parents and um, bought this house. And Six months later, came up with the down payment and it had rental in it. Ah. And so that was our key is that um, pretty much every house we ever lived in up to the one we are in currently had some form of rental, either under us, over us or beside us. Beside us. So you had a, a suite in that property or something like that, a secondary That's suite. Yeah. yeah. Or, or a duplex or or something we so you we house hacked from day one pretty out that's that's the term pretty nowadays much. is house hacking. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah pretty much yeah that fits us <laughs> <laughs> and and so what does your portfolio look like today what kind of properties you guys own and where are most of them in in saskatoon um that's our, been our primary focus we we have had in the past we had some properties in uh, bc that we had sold and um we just wanted something that we could, in, in our world at least, that we were able to manage. And I know many people like would like to say, you know, well, have somebody else manage it. In our case, we've opted that we do the management um, in-house. Right. Right. And you two are, you know, you're very entrepreneurial. You've been you've been running your own businesses alongside the real estate investing. Talk to us a little bit about the the challenges and and the um, ups and downs of, of trying to balance all of that out, plus having a family. There's no such thing as balance. Yeah. <laughs> really, um, when you're in motion, balance is because you're in motion. Hmm. You, you can't put, stop putting one foot in front of the other, otherwise you fall over. Hmm. So for us, as long as we're moving forward, that's balance in our world. And and we just we love doing it. And um definitely there are days where you kind of shake your head and go, like, what were we thinking? And yet you look back and those are the most memorable times. Um, and I think it's worked out because we're sort of on the same page. I, I would hope of, you're quite quite on the same page at, at this point. <laughs> yes. Yeah. 24-7. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, and I think the definition of entrepreneur is never stop work 24 seven, um, but loving it yeah, because as long as you're loving it, that's, yeah. that's super important. Okay. You guys, so you've been in the game for quite some time. Uh, what would you say is, is the primary makeup of your portfolio? Are they like these single family homes with secondary suites? Are they kind of a mix of those and Small multifamilies, like what? What kind of range do you guys have in your portfolio? Um, single families is a primary, um, but location is is key for us. Yeah, um, we have to be willing to live in any one of our houses before we would have one. 
That's one of the big things I remember about you guys is it's it's a very high quality of of rental that you have. And quite frankly, you did live in quite a few of those properties. <laughs> we have. <laughs> a few. We have. And we may live in some of them again. <laughs> Who, knows? Yeah. Who knows? And as, as a result, we've had a, a, an amazing tenant um, profile, I guess you could say. Because ultimately, your your house isn't really worth anything. It's the person who's in it that's worth something mm. in our world. So we've been fortunate that um, a majority of our of our of our tenants have been with us for five, ten, fifteen years. Wow! And uh, typically, if they move, they will move within about a two block radius of the location that they're at because they just love where they are. And they've mm. only left usually because we refuse to sell them the house that they're renting. Uh. <laughs> Yeah, they get, which yeah. is kind of a a bittersweet moment, right? You're you're yeah. losing a great tenant, but somebody's getting into into their home own their own home as an owner versus a renter. So that's that's always kind of nice to see. So yeah, you guys, uh, a lot is is based on relationship with your tenants. I know you go above and beyond for for them, and and you see them as more more than just um, you know how most people see tenants. Uh, so. Over the years, you you built up this portfolio. You love the idea of having tenants in there long term. That's really interesting because I was just attending our local real estate investment club meeting a few months ago here in BC, and the landlords are basically saying our goal is to have the exact opposite of that. The goal is to have turnover as quickly as possible because the challenge in BC and Ontario and a few other provinces is we have very pretty tight rental controls. So if you get a tenant in a property, you cannot raise their rent more than one or 2% a year, which the government you know, says is, is the max, no matter what's happening with inflation, no matter what's happening with interest rates, no matter what. So a lot of these landlords are really kind of hoping that a tenant will be in and out in a year, year and a half, and then they can get somebody else in there at fair market rent at that time. What what are your thoughts around that? What's been your experience around that? And is it similar or different in Saskatchewan? Well, Saskatchewan doesn't have the tight rental control. Right. So you can uh, you can raise rent at market rents, market rates if needed. If needed, yeah. yeah. If it needed. With that said, um, as you know, if you if you have a tenant move out, your your cost of getting that house back to some state, uh, depending on the house, of course, may depending on the tenant. <laughs> yeah, depending on the tenant more, um, it may it may end up costing you more than you ever thought. Yeah. And um, and for us, we do we do annual rental increases. We we try to keep them at a at a reasonable amount. Mm-hmm. But also we've ensured that the value is there. Um, things are repaired immediately. Um, the, the quality of the work is there and the locations are there so that initially when they move in, they're just like, wow, I can't believe I got this place. This is, this is amazing. Mm-hmm. And they ultimately want to stay there. And for us, that's, that's the big thing. We, we like to refer to it as a first date principle. So if you if you imagine there's there's three different scenarios. One's you're dating, one's you're going out, and the other you're getting married or you right. are married. Yep. And so in in some instances, the relationships that you have with people is that you're just going out, so it's it's sort of casual. Others you're you're or you're sorry you're dating and that's casual. Others you're going out, so it's it's more than just casual. There's some connection there. And then the third is that you're you're married to them. You're committed. Yeah, you're committed. And now the, the challenge sometimes can be that one person thinks they're dating and the other thinks they're committed, which is <laughs> completely it doesn't work. Been, been there. Yep. Been there. We're talking, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. We're talking about real estate here. Yeah, 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 yeah that's right. It's real estate. That's, that's another episode. <laughs> but it's it. And I always say, you know, imagine how you would how things would look if you treated everybody like it was your first date. Mm. And so every interaction you have, it's sort of deciding on, are we dating? Are we going out or are we married? And, you know, sometimes things happen. Sometimes there's agreement. Sometimes there's disagreement. Sometimes it's like, oh, I can't believe we were getting that call. 
but ultimately you place your value that way. And it, it, it totally changes the scenario when you go into it. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's worked really well for us over the years. So what, what does that look like in real life? I mean, I, I, I kind of get that as a concept, but what does treating it like a first date look like with a tenant or a prospective tenant or a, even more importantly, a, a tenant that's been with you for five years? I think one of the keys is, is being authentic always and because when we have conversations with them, they know that we mean what we say and we say what we mean. So there's no um, wondering, uh, trying to read between the lines, any of that. It's we tell them what they need to hear. They tell us what they need us to hear. Mm -hmm. And the communication is is key. Um, we've I've often said that people have asked us, how have you stayed married so long? What's your What's your secret? And I, I think you've got your three C's to success. If <laughs> we I don't, do. I was we trying do. to repeat that to somebody the other day, and I forgot the last C. So remind us your three C's to a successful, long-term, happy marriage. It's communication. Communication. Yeah. Commitment. Commitment. Compromise. And not always in that order. <laughs> um, and that works in all relationships. And we yeah. carry that over with the relationships we have with our tenants. Hmm. So that they, they know we're authentic because we do communicate. We're on top of things when they call or text, usually text. It's something that they need and we get right back to them, let them know we're working on it. Sometimes it takes a hot minute, as they say, yeah. to get things done because trades are so busy. Yeah. Um, but you but communicate we, that, right? They they know what's going on that that you haven't forgotten that you're you're on it. It's just beyond your control because nobody's available at that moment. And sometimes it, it's it's that, but the communication is is key, and it just stays with them so that that door is always open. Hmm. Yeah. Well, COVID was a great example. I mean, we, we, yep. I always laugh now. I say <laughs> back in the day. I meant three years ago, uh, <laughs> back in the day. And so when that happened, immediately, the first thing we did is we reached out, contacted each and every one of them, said, we know there's challenges. Um, is there anything that we can help you with? We don't know if we can, but let us know. And so very proactive. Even when you don't want to be. Yeah. Because <laughs> uh, that was a scary it was a scary <laughs> conversation <laughs> or a scary message to send because we didn't know what the answer was going to be. And um, everyone, thankfully, um, kept up on their rents. Wow. And uh, everybody stayed. And, um, you know, we, we, were, we were thankful for that because, as a lot of people don't know, that you, you can't necessarily, um, it, it doesn't always work out like you think it does. Right. Yeah. Well, especially at that time, nobody knew what the heck was going to happen. That was just a complete unknown for everybody, it seemed like the, the world was crashing down. It seemed like the Black Plague was at our doorstep. Yeah. Didn't quite turn out that way. But, you know, that's kind of how it felt at that time. Absolutely. So it was scary for everybody. Yeah, definitely. absolutely. It well, was. But the response from our tenants, all of them, was thank you so much for reaching out. And I think on our part, we were terrified <laughs> to ask the question. Yeah. But it was gratitude on, on their part that we did. So it was definitely... Nice. The that's right a class. Step. That's a class act, you guys. That uh, that is top notch. <laughs> so, um, switching gears a little bit, we were talking a little bit off camera about some of the fun stuff, interesting stuff that you guys have been up to since I last saw you a few years ago. So, what's what's been going on in your real estate investing over the last year or two? What have you been up to? That's a fascinating idea. Hold that thought for a second. Hi there, this is Dave Debo, and real estate investors hire me to raise capital the right way. Why? Because most of them are stuck with too small of a portfolio, and they don't know how to attract investors and raise money for their deals. So I help them to connect, capture, and close their ideal money partners. Bottom line, when you've got a deal, you're going to have the capital to do it. So go ahead and book a no-cost capital clarity session with me at bookachatwithdave.com. Again, that's book at chatwithdave.com. Well, we got the um, the first 
residential home. We were the first house to in Saskatoon to get formally rezoned and uh, legalized for Airbnb, which was so quite a process. As as it stands, Airbnb is illegal in the city of Saskatoon for single family homes or or well to have an entire home that's Airbnb. So if you if you're a re- if you're a, if you own the home and you're living in it, mm-hmm. then it's a really easy process. But if you do not live in the home and you want to have the entire home as an Airbnb, it's required or it should be <laughs> that yeah. you go through this process and it's um you know, it it involves public consultation. Wow. Um, you 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 have to put out twenty five hundred bucks whether you get approved or not. And uh, we were the first one to do that, but we were also no, the first no one. wonder. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no and, wonder you were the first one to do. That. And we were the first one to have a legal suite in an Airbnb. So even the the appraisal companies were like, I, 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 we have no idea. We don't even know what to tell you on this one because we've never seen it before. Well, that's okay. So there. So first of all, why did you decide to do that? And then before I forget, my second question is going to be two two questions. Second thing, what did that do for cash flow? And number three, what did that do for the value of the property? Because now it's legally zoned for that. So number one, why did you do it? We kind of didn't have a choice. We got a phone call from our tenant and said, you um, the toilet's backing up in the basement. Yep. And we're like, okay, so, you know, get the guy in to. Camera. He uh, brought a camera. Yep. And, yep. and he said, guys. Not, not a pretty picture, but anyhow. <laughs> to, make, to make a long story short, he's like, guys, your plumbing's failing. Like, mm-hmm. these are your main lines under the house. And the cast iron collapsed, essentially. Um, you know, just the year of the house and such like that. And it's in a super great area. A uh, trendy area near Broadway, uh, so it's a beautiful area. Restaurants, um, shopping, things like that. And so we had to gut the entire basement. So we had to remove amazing tenants. Uh, they and they were they were wanting to come back. Actually, yeah. um, they removed amazing tenants. We had to gut an entire basement. Yeah. Everything, the concrete had to come out. Everything came out. And the bills just mounted and mounted and mounted and mounted. And we were into it for um, a lot of money, which <laughs> involves a hundred in front of it. Um, uh, and, and, no and more. And, and no income for about eight months out of that property. Right. So then we looked at what are our options and we thought, you know, you could have it as a, as a separate. So, so sorry. So insurance didn't cover any of this. This was nope. uninsured. Yeah. Uninsurable. Yeah. yeah. Nothing at all. And okay. held up a bit due to the city being able to get their people in to do the connection. Um, they were, they were, they decided to replace all the water lines in the area. So we were waiting, waiting, waiting and uh, another whole story. Yeah. But so then we decided that this would be our, our, our our decision to to see what we could do with the Airbnb and it's it's turned out to be um, a spectacular decision. Uh, sure. uh, but again, we we went all out. Like we've got quartz countertops, we've got uh, fireplaces, we've got brand new furniture. Like everything was new uh, when we did it. So that again, it's somewhere that we would stay without a question. So and, what is uh, that? What is that translated to as far as? Um... The difference in cash flow on that property and <laughs> did you have experience doing airbnb stuff prior or was this your uh, kind of first kick of the can there was a, a tiny we, we did some uh arbitrage in calgary hmm. so we rented a couple of apartments and and airbnb them yeah. um and just seeing the amount of money that you could make uh, it was a little bit harder in, in Calgary in an apartment type situation, but in the house here with the two suites, um, the income is significantly greater yeah. than we could have ever made as as a single family home. Yeah, it's about two point about two point five times more. Wow, the income or the net cash flow? Uh, the income. So the net cash flow is way more than that higher. Yeah. 
I'm going to guess. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And now understand, we have a huge bill. Like we just, we, yeah. we spent a significant amount of money. It's going to take this. a little while to recoup the, yeah. the yes. six-figure rental that it's, you had to do. Yes, yeah. um, but it's at least possible now. Much, yeah. much faster than it would have been just to rent it out as a single well, family. It would have never happened as a single family. So how much was the property worth before the disaster? And now that it's zoned like it is now, what's your best guess on what it's worth now? I'm- um, we probably were at about 450 because the location and we're probably pushing about six now. Yet they're not really sure how to evaluate it because in, a, in an odd way, it's like a commercial property now. Well, I'm thinking so, yeah. Because yeah, and, and, and they're just looking at this based on a, a typical residential. Yeah. yeah. So they, they don't even know how to evaluate because they had nothing like you're this the first. Before. You're the yeah. first in yeah. Saskatoon. Because, yeah. yeah, that's exactly what I'm thinking. This is now more like valuing a small inn. Yeah hotel, motel, commercial type property, which is legally able to be operated as a short-term rental. Therefore, comparable rents are for short-term rentals, not for long-term, you know. Yeah, that's correct. All right. Well, that is exciting stuff, you guys. Cool, cool, cool. Well, time flies when we're having fun. But as we wrap this up, uh, we were chatting before we jumped on because we're, we're working on a uh, a bit of a tardy book project together, but this is our <laughs> our second one that we're doing. And and you you guys were were talking about the impact, and we've always talked about this over the years. The impact being an author has on you. So we we did a book together. My goodness, at least ten years ago now. I'm thinking, uh, what what did that what did that do for you guys? Um, it gives you credibility that you don't get any other way. Yeah, people. Go, oh, you you've written a book, and all of a sudden, it's like you are now the guru on the topic, and it changes how they talk to you, how they listen to you, how they invest with you, everything. It there's like it's it. You want to talk about ten xing? I hear that everywhere these days. That's how to ten x. Wow. So how do how do you guys utilize the book, and what do you use it for? We give it out almost like a business card. Yeah. So when we're doing, um, I, I call the, it a business card on steroids. Yeah, yeah it, it's at least you know, uh, you know, hundred and some pages of of business card, yeah. and it's it's just nice because it gives again some credibility and it it gives more of a conversation than yeah. a business card would. Like this is just something to hear. You know, take a look at this. Uh, just something that we did, and we like to share it with you. And so it helps with that conversation. And again, it's that 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 way of building a relationship. Um, so often we we talk about things with respect to it being a relationship, but but we don't act nor do we transact like it's a relationship. And th- there's a big difference in doing that, I found in, in what we found. And part of our biggest success is you know how we transact and um picking the right partner. Like when we talk about with your program, you know, the money partners and, and, and how you partner up with people, um, it makes a big difference in your life. If you can be on the same page with the person that yeah. you're with. Um, I mean, it, it just makes it that much easier to, to do deals, transact deals. And, and for that, I'm super thankful. And yeah. we have a, a built-in sounding board, you know, with each other. And well, we taught, <laughs> In one way, we're bad for each other because we're when no it comes common to, sense. When it comes to real estate, we we sell each other all day long. <laughs> but <laughs> that being said, it's um, you know when you're thinking of an idea, if you can't talk it out with the person that you spend the most time with, like you have to go find somebody. And mm-hmm. this way, you know, Lottie can come home and he can say, "Hey, I saw this deal. You know, what do you think?" And and we'll talk the numbers. We'll talk location we talk all of the things that that will go into it and decide on you know whether it's a, a good idea as opposed to having to go find somebody that you can bend an ear right right no that's fantastic you guys and and so with with the book are under what what occasions are you kind of 
finding to give that out or how how have you used that as lead generation, so to speak, for prospective investors or tenants or, or what do you use it for? Uh, with typically either in investments or um, with some of the different things that we're involved with at, at, at um, grads or different functions or let's say you're at a trade show where you'll have them and people ask about them. Um, as you know from previous conversations with the charity that Shelley created, um, TLC at home went back in 2006. And we talk about that in, in the book right. that we did with you. Um, you know, we will say you know, through donation to the charity, you can buy the book, but then also we'll, we'll give them out. And um, we give them out to the grads. Um, one of the, the beauty colleges that we, well, Laddie sponsors a, an award every year to somebody who thinks outside the box. Uh -huh. um, and uh, so we give a book also along with a $500 scholarship. Nice. And just in thinking that, you know, these are people that are just getting started out and maybe this can ultimately help them be successful in their, their path ahead. Oh, that's wonderful, you guys. No, that's beautiful. I love what you guys are up to. And thanks for sharing about that. That... Um, disastrous situation that you guys have turned <laughs> into uh, an amazing, amazing business. And I would be really curious to see once the smoke clears, how that is valued. Cause I'm thinking that's way more than, than yeah. what they valued it at for sure. So hats off to you. Keep up, keep doing a great job. If people want to connect with you, uh, what should they do? Uh, the easiest ways to get a hold of us probably by email would be Laddie, L A D D I E, Laddie at Saskatel, S A S K T E L dot net. So Laddie at Saskatel dot net. And we'd love to connect with you, um, share some of our ideas with you. We have done some speaking engagements that we, we do together. Yeah. And um, if you're just looking for real estate ideas and such like that, um, we'd love to share what we've done and what we're thinking and where we're going. That's wonderful. one. One more thing that I want to add that's new in the last year is yeah. Laddie got his realtor license. That's right. Congratulations. Hey, thank you. I don't know how the heck you find time between <laughs> everything that you're doing, but uh, so, I'm sure you do. You yeah. can also find him at EXP, EXP right. Realty. Right. There you go. Awesome, you guys. It's been a lot of fun. Thank you very much and keep up the good work. Hey, Dave, thank you so <laughs> thank much. Thank you so much for having us on. So good to see you again. Likewise. Wonderful All right, everybody. Take care. We'll talk to you on the next episode. Well, hey there. Thanks for tuning into the Property Profits podcast. If you like this episode, that's great. Please go ahead and subscribe on iTunes. Give us a good review. That'd be awesome. I appreciate that. And if you're looking to attract investors and raise capital for your deals, then I'm going to invite you to get a complimentary copy of my newest book right back there. There it is. The Money Partner Formula. You can get a PDF version at InvestorAttractionBook.com. Again, InvestorAttractionBook.com. Take care.